Today we're going to demonstrate our 72 inch commercial brush cutter. So on top of the deck I wanted to point out that this rib here is a 3 8 by 4 plate steel. It runs the full length of the deck so it's welded to the mounting plate on the rear and it goes directly up to the front edge. This is where most of the work is done when you're pushing brush and trees over. It ties into this other member which is made up of half inch plate steel and runs the full width of the front of the deck. Um, this gives you a very strong, a very stout, uh, robust structure to push against. It's not going to bend, it's going to be uh, long lasting and really tough. The skid shoes are half inch plate steel and they run the full length of the deck. So not only does this add a lot of strength to the end plate itself, but also gives you uh, a huge amount of wearability in the deck. The skid shoe is the part that's in contact with the ground almost all the time. So you want that to be heavy, you want it to be strong, and you want it to last a long time. Uh, this mower is equipped with a lift limit chain. This is meant to tie the frame of the mower to the frame of the skid steer loader. Okay, so there's several features I want to point out under the bottom of the deck. This is where all the hard work is done, so you want these components to be strong and robust. Uh, starting with the blades themselves, these are made up of half inch by four steel, medium carbon. They're heat treated and tested so that they're, uh, they meet safety standards for ductility. You don't want these blades to break off. So they have a certain amount of ductility built into them when they heat treat them. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this area that we've been mowing here that's brush. It's predominantly English buckthorn. Um, most of it is a, a few years old, so it's between a quarter inch and one inch diameter. There's a few larger clumps that are up to two and three inch diameter. English buckthorn is an invasive species. It's really tough to mow. It's really hard, really tough wood. And so it takes a lot of tip speed, a lot of energy to break it down and bust it up. Uh, this mower is doing a good job of mulching the bits up. Even the, the dead parts of it are splitting open. That's gonna enable the, the mulched up pieces to break down sooner. Um, I'm not so concerned about making this look pretty. We're just trying to get it knocked down and get it cleaned up. The blades are bolted to the stump jumper with a special uh, cold forged bolt. It's a grade eight equivalent. They're cold forged for strength. Obviously, you want the bolt to be robust. You don't want it to break off. What we cut here was a, about a three inch popple tree. There was two of them side by side. Uh, just to demonstrate that you can cut these down and mulch them up fairly well. A popple tree, of course, is a softwood. The stump jumper itself is made up of two main pieces. The dishpan shaped part here is quarter inch plate steel that's spin formed into a dishpan shape. What this allows is the leading edge then is has a ski toe effect. And if you hit an obstruction, it'll help uh, deflect the deck and the stump jumper itself over the obstruction which helps prevent damage and spike loads to the system. On the back side of the stump jumper there's a one inch by four inch bar that runs the full width of the stump jumper. This is actually what the blade is bolted to. So the blade bolt goes through the dish pan and through this bar. So for the structure we moved a lot of this structure to the bottom side for the generation three mower deck. We have a 3 8 by 2 ring that runs the full perimeter underneath. What this does is it helps stiffen the deck. Uh, instead of having ribs and structure on the top, we moved it to the bottom side to help keep the top of the deck uh, clean, makes it easier to clean off. And it also helps prevent the blades from coming up and contacting the deck itself if you should hit a large obstruction. From this view, you can see that we have chains on the back side of the deck. This is to help prevent material from flying back at the operator and the skid steer. It just helps knock it down before it leaves the deck, takes a lot of the energy out of it, uh, helps protect uh, not only the skid steer and the tires, but also the operator. Okay, so we've taken the covers off this brush cutter so you can see the drive system. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there about gearbox brush cutters versus direct drive. So I want to address that and talk about some of the pros and cons of each system. What we have here is a Charlin, uh, Eaton Charlin 2000 series motor driving into a right angle gearbox. And the key to this cutter is that this gearbox has a one to two speed increaser inside of it. So um, we're getting twice the speed out of the bottom of it than we are putting into the input side. So what that means is that we can use a larger displacement motor on the back side, which 
allows the motor to turn slower, you're using uh, more on the torquey side of the motor, um, it's going to run and breathe better at higher flow rates, and that means more efficiency and less heat buildup. So some of the fun surprises you find when you're mowing are rocks. Um, just mowing around this dead tree here, I've already hit four rocks. And this is not uncommon around here because a lot of this land used to be pasture or farmed and people would throw the rocks over by the trees thinking they were out of the way. So I think these are all granite. I've actually uh, chipped, shattered a whole chunk off of that rock. It's in pieces. This took a, a complete side of it off. This one I scum the top off and this one's got some skin marks on it too. Um, this is why it's important to have blades that are heat treated to a safety standard so that they don't shatter. Um, you'll get gouges in them, you'll ding them, sometimes you'll bend them a little bit, um, but they do a very good job of staying together and that's important so that they don't become projectiles. There's just enough ductility in them and they're just heat treated enough to be strong and hard and this is why you want that done. You don't want cheap blades on brush cutters. Finally, I want to talk about the structure of the center part of the deck. So we have the two main ribs running the full length of the deck. That's going to be the backbone. And we also have these cross members that tie the two ribs together. So that's what's going to add to the torsional rigidity of the deck itself. We have a heavy 3 8 inch plate that doubles up the quarter inch deck plate here in the middle where the gearbox bolts to. So that's going to resist bending uh, when the gearbox sees loads. And this whole box here is covered so it it's protected from any kind of debris or sticks that might fall on it or jab at it. Uh, it's protected from all sides and also from the top. This box is also where we have the blade bolt access cover. So if you need to change your blades, this is the access cover for getting at those bolts. On the back side of the drive system, we have a valve block with a very important safety feature built into it. This relief valve is plumbed into the brake circuit. So when you shut the brush cutter off, the oil flow that's leaving the motor will have to go over the relief valve. That helps break or stop the system faster. So it'll stop in under 10 seconds. Some of the other brush mowers out in the market that are built cheaper might only have a check valve between ports A and B. And when you shut those off, they may run on for one or two minutes or beyond depending on how fast and how heavy the flywheel is. So this is a really important safety feature. Uh, we also have a check valve built into this that prevents the operator from running the mower backwards. The reason that's important is because if you did run it backwards, you wouldn't be pumping the oil over the relief valve the right direction when you shut it off and it would cause the motor to cavitate. That can be hard on the internals of the motor itself. So it's important that we prevent the operator from running the mower backwards. The tube lines that we use here are really nice for efficiency. They have smooth corners and they're sized well to match the flow rates that this brush cutter is gonna see. Um, some other brush cutters on the market might use right angle elbow fittings and they're um, because of their shape there takes a lot more pressure to pump the oil through that corner we have nice smooth corners here um, all of this adds up to better performance less pressure loss and also less heat buildup for a brush cutter of this type uh, one that is predominantly going to be cutting grass and brush and small saplings it's better to have a, a mower system that's running at a higher speed and the reason for that is because it does a better job of cutting cleanly. Uh, you're using less energy to, to cut the saplings off than you would if you're hitting them multiple times. And in order to do that, you have to have tip speeds that are they're pretty high. The gearbox with the ratio built into it is the secret to getting those higher tip speeds. You'll notice that a lot of direct drive brush cutters, their tip speeds are pretty low. And so the way they try to make up for that is by using heavier stump jumpers uh, or more blades. And that doesn't necessarily give you a better cutting action when it comes to uh, brush and grass and small saplings. What that does mean is that it may have a lot more recovery time. So um, it may take a lot longer for the skid steer to get the brush cutter up to speed. Secondly, there's the economics. 
these gearboxes have been used for 50 to 75 years on uh, brush cutters used on tractor mowers and so they're uh, very reliable they're very well known they're easy to get parts for they're used in high quantities and so they're more economical they're cheaper to buy um, cheaper to replace if you ever have any problems they're also well designed uh, specifically for uses just like this I hope you've enjoyed this video we've done on the commercial brush cutter be sure to check back as we make more videos just like this as always give us a call or check out our website if you have any questions